know, what's true about all of our lives is that all of our lives have different chapters and circumstances and, and seasons and realities. And in the 12th chapter of the book of Genesis, we meet this man named Abram. And this is a, a part of his story, a moment in his life. Genesis chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. The Lord has said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left as the Lord had told him. Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old. When he set out from Haran, he took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. Well, a couple years ago I was at a Minnesota Twins game in Minneapolis with some buddies and there was an older gentleman who was sitting kind of one row down to our right and he noticed that uh, my friend Dylan and I uh, both had our hats on backwards and this guy's in his 60s and he turns around and he looks at Dylan and I and says you know when are you too old to wear your hat backwards and we both kind of laughed And I told this guy, you can wear your hat backwards if you want to, man. You can rock it, totally. And it's so interesting, isn't it? The boundaries that we put on what we can step into and what we cannot step into. It's really interesting to think about that in our life with God, too. I mean, Abram, he's this 75-year-old man who has built a whole life. And there's children and there's grandchildren and there's servants and animals, there's just all of these markers of really a life well lived, a a life lived to the full. But then he steps into a moment after seven and a half decades of life where God says to him, Abram, I want to do a new thing in a new place. And so he calls him to leave the land that he had known to a land that God would show him. And so the call on Abram's life is to move. And God promises that he's going to make him a great nation, that his name is going to be great. People are going to know his name. People are going to recognize his name. And he's going to bless those who bless you. And he's going to curse those who curse him. And all of the peoples of the earth are going to be blessed through him. So not just his immediate family will experience the blessing that it is to know Abram. And not just their children and their children and their children. But watch this. All the peoples of the earth will be blessed. I think there's just a couple things in this passage that are worth coming around and thinking about for a few minutes this morning. And one of those is just this idea that God's promises are always bigger than our vision. Right? So Abram is called to step into a land that God is going to show him. Like Abram doesn't have his eyes on it. He's never stepped into this land before. He's lived in this same place trying to be faithful to God and be attentive to the needs of the people around him and God moves him from that place. God's promises are are always going to be bigger than than what we can see. They're going to be bigger than our 
vision because God's promises don't just have to do with us. God's promises have to do with the nations, have to do with other people, people who are going to come long after we are buried in the ground. Sometimes I think what happens in our life with God is that we allow our vision to lead God's promises instead of God's promises leading and informing our vision. And so if our vision matches up with a a promise from God and it's believable to us and we can kind of see it play out in front of us, then we're willing to go, then we're willing to move, then we're willing to be faithful to the call. But what happens to us when God promises something that we cannot see, that we couldn't imagine happening? Like, are we willing to move? Are we willing to go? Are we willing to change, to step into a different land? And there's kind of this other thing to this morning that if the land that we are being called to is visible to us we'd stay put like if if we knew all of the pain that was going to be involved all of the struggle that was going to be involved all of the hardship that was going to be involved like i think we would stay put i don't think that we would move And I think God knows that he has to be a little bit of a breadcrumb kind of God in leading us along the way because if he shows us the whole thing, I think that we would just be too scared, too wrapped up on our own comfort to follow him. And so if the land that we're being called to is completely visible, we would stay right where we are. So I just wondered this morning, like, what are the ways in which you have stayed put in your life with God? Like, what are the ways that you have desired to see the land that God was calling you into before you actually moved your feet? I wonder what kind of promises you have pushed away because they are bigger than your vision. And there's this old guy who died a long time ago his name is gk chesterton and he talks about really two desires we have in life one is a desire for wonder and another is a desire for welcome that we have this desire for wonder for adventure for learning for growing for being stretched for struggle like it's the child who walks outside and and notices all of these things all of these ants on the ground, all of these different colored leaves, all of the dirt, all of these things that so many adults walk right on by. To live in this state of wonder, but then also to live in a place of welcome, of comfort, and belonging. And when I think about those two desires within us, a desire for wonder and a desire for welcome, I think to walk with Jesus, to live life with God, is to experience the wonder, the adventure of life in the Spirit, and also to not be always and ever experiencing the welcome that comes from what this world offers, but experiencing the welcome that comes through His voice by His Spirit. So I wonder if you consider yourself too bold to wear your hat backwards. Like I wonder if anybody's just decided, oh, I couldn't possibly make this change in my life because I'm too this or I'm not enough of this. I wonder if there's anybody listening today who feels stuck in the land that their feet are planted in when really their heart is in another land. I wonder if God would be good and kind powerful enough to call you away from some welcome into wonder. Grace and peace.